Hey guys, um, so I decided to do case study um, three, which was about the Penn State leadership um, and what I called the Sandusky case because it was something that I was familiar with prior to reading about followership, um, just simply because I remember it from the news. Um, if you're not familiar with the case, uh, ultimately this is the Penn State football program. You have the head coach. Um, then you have underneath him another um, coordinator, um, last name Sandusky, um, who was accused of um, child sex abuse. And um, there were reports of it to um, Coach Paterno at the very beginning, um, like 20 years earlier. Uh, and then it started coming out again. And long story short, it continued to just be swept under the rug um, and and blown off. Uh, so the question number one is, how would you describe the followership at Penn State? So as a whole, I think that they had a common purpose. It's just that the common purpose was prestige and they were willing to sacrifice integrity um, and things that they knew morally were wrong and ethically were wrong uh, because they had so much clout and they didn't want to lose it. Um, when you identify like who the leader was, while in this case it talks about people who were technically above Coach Paterno, um, I would say that Coach Paterno is the leader. It sounds like his decisions and his clout and his popularity is what made deciding factors um, occur. So, for example, when um, the people above um, Paterno said, all right, we've got to turn this in. Uh, Paterno said, no, 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 let's, uh, we've been talking it over. Let's just um, get them some help. So I think that all of the others would be followers. So in that case, you have, um, let's see, we've got an um, assistant coach. We have um, an athletic director. Um, so at the time, the assistant coach was, our defensive line coach was Sandusky, the accused. You also had Gary Schultz, who's the Senior Vice President of Finance and Business. Um, you also had a graduate assistant, uh, Mike McQuarrie, who um, had no relation to the football stadium um, or football program, but did witness something and was the final one to report. Then you also had the university's president, Graham um, Spanier, or Spanier, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, and then the uh, athletic director was Tim Curley. So I would say that each of those, while some of them had um, titles higher than Paterno, were um, followers rather than leaders. So um, it says, use Kelly's typology, how would you describe the follower styles for Schultz and for Curly? So I debated about this one um, fairly significantly, uh, but I would have to say that um, uh, Curly is more of a passive follower, so he's the type that's going to say, so what do you think? And then he's going to do whatever they say, regardless of um, how he feels about it. Whereas I think that um, Schultz and Spanier are more of conformists, so they want to keep it going, whatever good thing they've got going. So they're going to be yes people because it's going in the direction they want it to. And they want to continue to go that way. And then finally, you have McQuarrie, who again is the um, whistleblower graduate student. Um, I would say that he's the pragmatist. Um, a little nervous about reporting it, but did report it, but then never followed through. Um, Ultimately, when nothing was done, he didn't go any further. He didn't go above their heads. Uh, he kind of says, I've turned it over. I I'm done. Um, the third question says, um, how do followers in the case act in ways that contribute to the power of destructive leaders and their goals? So again, I think that you have a situation where there's a lot of clout. There's a lot of money. Um, you're talking a big college state, strong football winning program. Um, and I think that all of that outweighed the things that they knew were right from wrong. 
Um, but at the time, they felt like they had a common goal and a common purpose that was bigger than that. So what was the debilitating impact uh, their actions had on the organization? So clearly, uh, since it has come out and since it has gone to court, um, Joe Paterno has passed away. And even in passing, he never had a chance to clear his name. He will always go down essentially in history as the coach who allowed it to happen um, underneath his supervision. Um, then you've got Sandusky, who was accused um, and convicted of 45 counts of child sexual abuse. Uh, that's something that it you don't get over. So ultimately, when somebody says Penn State, at least to me, that's going to be the first thing that pops in my head. Um, and that's not exactly a good thing. So therefore, the, or the whole organization as a school, not just a football program, but as a school, will suffer. So then it says, based on Lippmann Bloom and psychological factors that contribute to harmful leadership, explain why those who could have reported Sandusky's behavior chose not to. So again, I think it goes back to their own personal worries of losing clout or um, losing um, maybe for fear of ridicule, which I think, you know, it spoke about the janitor having seen it and reported it to a coworker and then to a supervisor, but none of them ended up reporting it to anyone higher. And again, I think that goes to just being fearful of being the final whistleblower on such a big school and such a big program. And would they then be outcast? Would they, you know, would they be ridiculed for being the people who um, or ostracized for being the people who brought down the program? I think your um, veneer and um, Curly were all worried about um, needing to be special in some ways um, and for security, security of their jobs and their position, um, and, and also a fear of powerlessness, um, which I think more fits um, um, Curly than any of them. The next question was, based on the outcome, where did Paterno's intentions go wrong? So again, there in the end, the second time that it came up, when they were going to finally report it to authorities, and Paterno comes back and says, no, nah, we've just decided to get him some help. Again, I think that he justified it saying, this is a sick man, and we can get him some help. We don't have to bring down the whole program. We can get him some help. And that's where his intentions, um, well, one of the places that his intentions went wrong. Uh, in what ways could followers have changed the moral climate at Penn State? First of all, if they had reported it when it first came up, if Paterno had gone straight to authorities, or if the people who had seen it before went straight to authorities, it actually would have ended up saving the organization's overall goals, because then it would be, oh my gosh, just had a bad apple, and they flushed him out quick. But the fact that they covered it up, you know, signifies that, that what they see is more important uh, than whistleblowing child um, sexual assault was to build a football program. Kind of shows that their priority, priorities are not where you want them to be. Um, and then finally, in the end, who carries the burden of responsibility regarding the failure of Paterno's program? So Paterno died, going from a legend uh, to having a, a significant blemish um, on his uh, character and on his program. Uh, you know, it spoke about obviously Sandusky uh, being sentenced uh, to 30 to 60 years in prison. Um, then you've got um, even all the way up to the board. The board of trustees um, was quoted as failing to exercise its oversight, stating that the board did not create a tone at the top environment. So in other words, they did not they put too much pressure maybe on the football program being successful that it made others question, Ooh, would I, would it, would I rather risk bringing down this football program or would I rather risk my integrity? And with a good top down approach, that should never be a question that is brought up. And then finally, um, it just says, you know, do you see the leaders or the followers as, uh, having, um, a stronger burden. And honestly, I see them all as having a strong burden. In the end, they ultimately either um, all lost their careers or lost their clout 
Um, whereas again, if they had dealt with it in the beginning, um, then not only would it have saved children, um, obviously, but it would have saved the program, the careers, um, and the organization as a whole. I look forward to your other response and uh, responses, and I hope that fills you in. Thanks.